Uh, I used to be in the US for over 10 years and I east or west uh, home is best I decided to come back I used to be in, uh, in the US Navy and uh, now I'm back home and I hey guys uh, it's a guy here from uh, Best of Home and uh, right here as you can see I have my fellow farmer here he's just going to uh, before he introduce himself uh, just let me just talk about what we are presenting today and uh, today we are learning about uh, banana banana farming that is uh, tissue culture and uh, my friend Dana how are you? I'm doing great please introduce yourself my name is Dennis I own this farm um, it's a two acre farm and uh, yeah that's great Dennis now I can see you have a uh, very major project right here. About uh, you have like around a thousand plants right here. How did this come up? This came up as a result of the topography of the land. Mm -hmm. The land used to be sloppy, and uh, due to excavation, there were a lot of rocks. Okay. And uh, I couldn't plant uh, any other fruit trees like mango trees. Okay. Avocado trees mm -hmm. because of their tap of their roots okay. go deeper. Okay. And because there's a rock which is a, on the surface, it's close to the surface. I thought of a um, of plants that need uh, that can't have a deeper root. That was well thought of you. Yes. Uh -huh. Then I thought of bananas because bananas do not have a, a huge root system. They have a shallow system. Uh, so that's what came into my mind and I chose to practice a tissue culture farm. Oh, that's great. Before you continue, maybe if you could tell us about uh, what is the capital needed to do such a big project? Uh, how did you start it? How did you do the benches and the this I mean, uh, this slope and all that? The capital to start this business, uh, it ranges from, it depends on the land. Okay. Because I had to put a lot into this land for, the land preparation took a lot of money because I had to use uh, excavators to uh, dig the trenches and everything. Okay. So, if you have a land like mine, it will take more as compared to a person who has a flat land. But uh, the capital to buy the bananas, uh, every plant, when you purchase it at a certified uh, agricultural zone, like uh, the Katumani, mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, an agriculture um, institute, it costs about 150 per plant. So you want to mean this is uh, tissue culture, not this the normal traditional uh, banana? Yeah, this, uh, this is tissue culture. I have two types of bananas here. Okay. We have, uh, we have uh, the Williams, mm -hmm. and uh, which is in these three benches. Okay. Then uh, on the top, I have Grant 9. I, I see you have like around uh, uh, five of them. Yes. Okay. So the first two... Are, are they called benches or they're called they are terraces? Levels, right? terraces, yeah. Okay. So, the first two levels hmm. is Grant 9 uh, tissue culture. Okay. okay. That is a bit short and has a bigger, even the, the, um, the fruit, uh, the fruit, the bunch, hmm. is about 30 to 50 kgs. Okay. And here is the Williams. Mm -hmm. They say the bigger, the, the whole bunch, uh, it produces about uh, 60 kgs. So the Williams usually have bigger bananas as compared to the uh, Grant 9. The, Gra the Williams, uh -huh. they grow taller okay. than the Grant 9 okay. because of the wind uh -huh. coming from across the river. I uh, didn't want to support these uh, uh, trees because the, the banana seeds they grow taller. And taller. Uh -huh. So that's why I chose a place where you don't have a lot of wind. Okay. And uh, the Grant 9, because they are shorter, uh, the variety is shorter, mm -hmm. that's why I chose to plant them uh, where there's wind because they don't, you don't need a lot support them. Yeah, uh, uh, most of the uh, banana farmers say that uh, tissue culture takes like around uh, 420 days vis-a-vis mm -hmm. uh, -vis the traditional one which takes around uh, five, uh, around 540 days yes. to mature and uh, produce a uh, fruit. Yes. 
So uh, is there like a range whereby uh, maybe uh, the Williams is a little bit much faster in terms of uh, maturity than uh, the Grandpa? Uh, according to their research, because I asked about the banana, they say we, are, we have the same uh, reproduction. Uh, the cycle is kind of the same. Okay. Uh, usually a year, uh, within a year, two months, yeah. they will both their fruit. Okay. So it's close. Okay. It's just it's just a different variety. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Back to the viewers, uh, we'd just like to uh, do the difference between the two varieties. Uh, just a few uh, talk here and there about uh, uh, the banana farming before we start going around to show you how the holes are dug, the spacing, uh, the, the kind of, uh, I mean, the manure in it and all that. So um, just to ask another question. I'm sure uh, you did some research and uh, before you started maybe the, the thought of uh, what do I need to do here with all of bananas? Have you ever thought of uh, any kind of diseases, any kind of pests which are likely to affect your bananas? Or, and if you thought about it, uh, what will you be doing? Do you, do you, are, you, are you doing organic or are you doing uh, the chemical way? I'm really pretty much uh, going the organic way because I've used uh, cow manure through all my own. All we have it all. Uh, I put cow manure okay. and uh, a little bit of fertilizer for the, the DAP that uh, is going to help with the root formation because I just planted. They are still seedlings. They are growing up. So for them to uh, develop their roots, you need to apply a little bit of uh, DAP fertilizer okay. and that will help them with the root formation. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I will solely run organically with manure. Oh, that's good. Yeah, with the diseases. So far, there are no diseases yet. Um, we are trying to look at um, there are some insects mm -hmm. that uh, come eating the leaves. Sometimes they eat the bite, okay. the leaves that are, we've used uh, pesticides mm -hmm. to control to control the, the little insects. Okay. But now after the pest uh, pesticide application mm -hmm. it seems they have gone away so the, the pesticide worked really good okay yeah. uh, I'll just like uh, to add something on uh, this is just a no my own knowledge, knowledge which I get to maybe uh, visit different farmers and tell me about the guys who are uh, mm -hmm. doing organic farming yeah. so basically uh, for this kind of uh, crops and all that for the pest if you're doing organically mm -hmm. You can always use the things to do, you can always use chili, onion, uh, garlic, yeah. and uh, you, uh, you, do, you do, you make a concussion yeah. and then you spread the concussion on the plants. Yeah. That will really help in uh, doing, putting away the, the, the insects. Yeah. Uh, there are some kind of uh, the weevils yeah. which uh, bite uh, the leaves. Yeah. Uh, the other kind of uh, the aphids yeah. which also attack the leaves and all that. Yeah. So that will really help in uh, doing away uh, with this kind of uh, pest pesticide. Yes. So uh, with that, uh, fellow farmers, we're going to move around and uh, show you the varieties we have, that is the Grandpa and the William. Yes. And uh, we're still going to talk more about it yes. as we move around the two acre farm. Thank you. See you soon. So good people, uh, just to explain to you uh, more about uh, the William tissue culture. As you can see right here. Oh. So as you can see, uh, this is around uh, one month old. You can see how big. Uh, it's like around one and a half foot tall. As you can see. So uh, the tissue catcher really grow very fast. You can also see this is another hole whereby it already has some uh, suckers uh, you can see it's one month already get, you get in suckers so guys uh the farmers uh, banana farmers just like to advise you on something that uh when you're doing uh, when you're doing the holes if you're doing like uh 300 holes please just buy around uh, 200 seedlings and the 200 seedlings so after like a month we're going to have uh, some suckers develop. 
So you please use the circus to fill out the other hundred dollars. So do not spend money buying all your, I mean, filling up all the 300 dollars. These things uh, you get, I mean, uh, circus start developing after a month. So you don't need to buy, or just just buy a few and then you start transplanting one by one and all that. So I'm sure most of you are going are asking uh, what is the distance between uh, the bananas. So uh, in terms of uh, rows, we have three meters, uh, three meters by two meters. That is what uh, this farm uh, has been planted. So uh, there is two acres of this. So I'm going to move you up to the upper, upper terraces, just show us uh, what is happening and uh, showcase uh, uh, the plantation. So walk with me. Uh, back to you. Guys, uh, as you can see, this is another terrace. See, uh, this is still William, tissue catcher. And uh, as uh, Mr. Dennis said, uh, the tissue catcher takes around uh, uh, around one year, four months to mature up. And you start getting bananas. Uh, there is uh, the, the banana plant keeps on uh, producing suckers. So you can still, uh, it produces suckers one month after you plant it. That is after you have done, uh, my, you, you have done some good uh, uh, holes. Uh, those who are asking uh, the kind of uh, excavation done here. Uh, first of all, let me talk about uh, uh, the kind of irrigation which is being done here. As you can see, there is a very big river uh, which is uh, flowing down there. And uh, the river has uh, it's kind of a dam which is built like around 300 meters far away. So this is the drawback water which is drawing back uh, for like around uh, uh, around two kilometers back. So there is plenty of water here which uh, uh, farmers can use throughout the year. And uh, back to the uh, the kind how the do the wells are dug and all that. So uh, to indicate you, uh, I told you they also uh, most of them are three meters by three meters, uh, but some of them are three meters by uh, two meters. That is in a line uh, uh, from one row to another is three meters, and then in a line from one in the line from one plant to other is around two meters. So as you can see, uh, this was excavated using an excavator. So what happened is here yeah, uh, an excavator came that is uh, with the large tractors. So they plant on how the terraces are going to be uh, built. So it's scooped out, making the terraces and all that. After that, uh, yeah, they, they started the scooping of uh, soil. From uh, all these holes are scooped using an excavator. So as you can see, it's deep enough. The holes uh, were around one, one meter and a half. And uh, you can see the kind of uh, soil. It's not uh, nutritious uh, soil. So what happened is uh, after scooping two meter, uh, I mean around one meter deep, two meters wide and maybe the width one meter. So uh, Mr. Dennis took another, uh, took some other soil from somewhere else, put it in. He died uh, around uh, two buckets of uh, manure into the holes. He also did some uh, grass, did in the soil, and then planted. That's why you can see uh, the banana plants are coming up very well. They are very, they look well maintained. They look, yeah. So, this is it. And I told you this is a two acre piece of land of uh, bananas. Uh, two kind of bananas that is uh, the Williams and the Grand Nine. You can see this one is coming up very well. So, with an estimation of uh, the next one month, every plant here will have a sucker. And these are around uh, 1,200 plants. So, you can imagine uh, you're having uh, around 1,200 suckers, which you'll start selling even before the plant matures. 
So already you'll be getting your profits. See this? It could have taken around, uh, could have taken around 200 people or 100 people to dig these kind of holes in this dry land, this rocky, rocky area. And uh, you could have been charged uh, around uh, 300 shillings per hole. Whereby if you bring a tractor uh, for a whole day, that is around uh, 12 hours, uh, charges you around, uh, uh, charges you around, uh, is it 5,000 per hour? 6,000 per hour and all that. So you manage to do this work very easy. Manage to do it very easy. Spent the least time digging all this. These are all Williams. Very well taken care of. Two buckets of manure. You can see the spacing. I'm sure there are some kind of uh, diseases which affect uh, uh, bananas. I'm not an expert in that. But uh, for the agronomists, for the experts, please leave us a comment on the same. Leave us a comment uh, the kind of diseases which affect bananas and uh, how to treat them. And uh, like Mr. Dennis said, he is doing organic. So we don't need chemicals. So please do a comment about uh, the organic way of preventing uh, diseases, preventing pests. Uh, I'm sure there's some kind when this banana grows around uh, the next like eight months or the next, I think seven months, it starts uh, uh, producing fruits and all that. So what I know is uh, uh, there is some kind of a disease called uh, uh, cigarot. Cigarot is uh, the the baby starts producing uh, rotting at the hand. Rotting at the hand. So I hear that uh, you see that you haven't uh, you haven't been doing uh, cleaning your farm means that your farm is dirty. You need to prune the leaves, the rotten leaves. You need to prune uh, those leaves which have diseases and all that. Uh, that's the, and there's something else called a yellow yellow cola or corner or something. I'm not sure of it. So I'll do a proper another video showcasing uh, the kind of uh, the diseases, the pests, how to control them. Guys, you can see, it's a very good view of uh, the river. So the, the river is flowing. It's not like uh, it's at standstill. If you go at the dam, there is, uh, the dam is, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see some uh, uh, rock-like. I'm just going to zoom it. I uh, see you can see now you can see where the, the dam is uh, That is the wall which was built around uh, uh, Built around uh, uh, Yeah, around 30 years ago So all this is drawback Of the river so what happens here is uh, most of the farmers use generators to uh, Irrigate their farms all these, uh, okay, uh, most of the farmers here do uh, tomato farming, onion farming, uh, vegetables and all that. Well, I can see this, uh, this, uh, this is the season whereby most of the guys in Cumberland do mines uh, farming, short range. You can see there are some of them which are com coming up very well. So walk with me, I show you the Grant 9. Um, my apologies, earlier I'd call them Grandpa. <laughs> Somebody corrected me. They called it Grant 9. It's a kind of a tissue catcher banana. So walk with me to that area. So uh, Dennis, yes. yeah, um, I just wanted you to show me the Grant 9. Uh, I'm sorry, you corrected me. I was calling them Grandpa. Oh, I I, you told me it's uh, Grand 9. It's so please, would you take us through the Grand 9s? The Grand 9s are from, from this area. Okay. All the way to the end. Okay. And the two levels up 
this side. Okay, okay. This is all grand nine. Yes. And uh, the grand nines are about two fifty. Two fifty, yeah. Yes. Okay. And you talked about there is no any major differences between the William and Grand Nine. Yes, it's very minute. You said the Williams are a little bit taller. Yes. Uh, the Grand Nines are shorter. Yes, shorter. And uh, in terms of maturity, they mature maturity at the same time. The same, yes. Okay. So, uh, tell me about uh, did you incur any challenges uh, from the start, uh, the, from the time you started scoping level in this area to the time of planting and all that? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, there's a lot of rocks in this uh, area. Okay. The, the, the place was rocky due to uh, excavation. Okay. So yes, I had to pay for the excavators to scoop the, the the hard rock. Okay. Because the hard rock was there's a mix between the soil and the rock. Mm -hmm. So I had to get a, an excavator to dig okay. the holes for me. Okay. Because if I had to put a human capital. Yeah be really hard for them to do the job so i had to bring a tractor okay to this. oh but um the cost the, the cost were not too high i say it's medium mm -hmm. so i did it uh so bro uh you are talking about the excavation of the area and uh, if you could have used a uh, human how long it would have taken you a very long time yes you... i i did um my own calculations and i found that uh, uh, a day you could dig uh, an average of five holes or three holes with human capital and uh, with an excavator i saw that uh, i could uh, it's, it's a back hole it's the one with a little hand yeah. to dig. so with that one you could do an average of 130 a day so oh, that was fast yeah uh, that's why i i saw that uh, the excavator could do a better job bigger holes and uh, deeper ones within a short range of time uh, as compared to human capital which i thought of about uh, four or five months yeah. and the excavator uh, did uh, about two within two weeks it was done okay actually five days it took five days five days yes to scope around a thousand scope, holes yes. okay so bro uh tell me something else eh? uh i can see there is a very big river flow in there yes. with a lot of water does it dry out with uh, uh, within a specific period of time yes uh we have a lot of people doing irrigation around this area so my neighbors plant onions and other things so uh, it's really it takes about four or five months after the rain for the, for, for the river to get empty to go empty so uh, by in the next three months it's going to be dry enough what what are, what are you planning to do about that does yes. it mean that uh, your plants are going to dry after no. the river dries i've tried to dig my own uh, to have my own water preservation i have a little dam up and i up this level guys i'll take you there yes and uh, i have uh, i'm planning to build our uh, tanks uh, on raised level. tanks yeah raised tanks okay for for gravity flow to the to all the bananas through drip irrigation mm -hmm. and um button irrigation okay yes. uh tell me something about uh, i'm sure you've done all your research concerning uh, banana farming you have done your research from uh, where you're going to get the seed, uh, the tissue culture yes. uh, seedlings, which is the best varieties, yes. to grow in them, transplanting them, uh, to maintaining them until they mature. So tell us about the market in this area. There's a huge market. We have uh, we have four market days around this area. We have one in uh, a town nearby called Masi. Amonio, Machakos, and Tawa. So we have a huge customer base uh, for bananas. So I looked at the market and I saw that uh, at an average I can sell a truckload of bananas per, per day. So if I go through those four markets, I could actually sell almost about six, no, 60 to 70 bunches per week. That's much. So, so there's a lot of customers around my area. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
guys uh the guys who are listening to or watching this you have already heard uh, the research was done so before you start any kind of crop please uh do your research very well and sure that uh, you have a market and sure that there is a place you're going to sell this once uh the the resources are mature up so uh mr dennis here is going to take us to where he has done the shallow uh excavation to store his water so please walk with us uh, before Mr. Dennis walks uh, us to there, mm -hmm. maybe you can show us a few things and tell us a few things about the, the Grand Nine. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the look of things, just my own observation is uh, uh, we were down there mm -hmm. for the Williams. Yes. As you can see, it's, uh, it's these are terraces. Yes. So down there for the Williams. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Williams, in a month's time, they have already started producing some suckers vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the Grand Park. Yeah. I've walked around. I haven't seen uh, suckers. Maybe uh, my own observation is uh, the Williams and the Grand Nines. Uh, Williams are a little bit uh, maybe faster in maturing up. Mm -hmm. I think that is why uh, maybe they grow taller mm -hmm. or something. Yes. I'm not sure of that. Maybe somebody on the comment to give us uh, an advice or comment concerning that. Yes. So let's walk to the Grand Nines. So I can see that uh, for this kind of for the for the trees uh, planted here, they were given good spacing, vis-a-vis -vis down there, Mr. Dennis. What was your plan? Why did you uh, uh, space those one uh, densely space the ones of the the Williams, vis-a-vis -vis the Grand Nines? One was the space. Each level we uh, is, we wanted to fit more uh, because it's a commercial plant. Okay. I wanted to feed a uh, lot of plants, but this level was kind of shallow. That's why I thought of putting three instead of four. Mm -hmm. If I had more space, I could put more um, plants. But uh, we saw this level could only fit three. So the holes between uh, Grand Nines and uh, the William, the level it should be about three um, by two. Uh, yes, three meters. Uh, the spacing because, yeah uh, yeah yeah that is what we have noticed with the grand nines they are three by three, three, by three. down there the williams are three by two yes yes so one factor is the space each level okay because of the slope okay but, uh, you can fit as long as as this good spacing mm -hmm. you can fit as lot as much as you can so i chose to go with three for this level okay the other levels that i put two uh, because of uh, one, I was using an excavator, okay. so it could not maneuver through every little space. So we are trying to fix uh, holes where it, we could. Yeah, you, you initially told me that uh, you used the excavator. Yes. The water, to, the soil it was scooping, yes. was used to widen the terrace. Yes, I think that was very brilliant of you. Yes. So let's walk uh, just to check whether the G, uh, the Grand Nines, yes. have any suckers. But uh, something else, guys, is uh, the Grand Nines are uniformly growing vis-a-vis -vis the Williams. I'm not sure was the reason. But as you can see, they are all like uniform. But uh, there is no suckers. Yet these were grown the same day with the Williams. So I believe you are learning something. So... um. After nine, after like uh, around six months, we'll, we'll be bringing you back here just to see the progress. How the Williams and the Grand Nine tissue catcher bananas are proceeding. But uh, Mr. Dennis, this is very beautiful work. Thank you very much. This is very beautiful. Yes, I'm a little, it's a little startup. It was well thought. And uh, thank you. It's a little startup and um, I'm trying to see whether I can take it to another level. Yep. So slowly but sure, I know I'm going to work hard and make sure they, they mature and I get good and bamba harvest. Whenever I come here, I learn a lot from you. Oh, thank you. I learn a lot from you. Yeah. And uh, I'm always trying to see whether I can fix something when I go back to my farm. See whether I can uh, plant a little bit or put some pressure on myself I'm happy to, hear <laughs> yeah. to do yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Um, what is the plan for this uh, banana plantation in the next uh, uh, five years? Are you planning to do bananas throughout? Because I'm sure uh, our banana does is uh, 
within no time there is no there will not be working space right here because of the suckers and all that yeah. and uh what is the plan to ensure that uh the bananas don't fill up this area yes the plan is uh i'll be trying to train uh i want to have a hole three at a time because if i have more than three bananas they will be the production will be low and the nutrients in the soil will start depleting so for me to make sure that i'm getting a good harvest i have to have a maximum of three uh, trees per hole and um, so whenever i have to make sure that uh, when one is reproducing i have the the two uh almost reaching uh, the age of maturity okay because if i have like two um with with the little uh bunches that at a time yeah it means uh the, the, those two will be heavy feeders yes and uh they will love little bunches yeah, yeah. for me to make sure that uh i have big big bunches one the maturity uh, is shortened yeah. and big bunches and all that yes mm -hmm. and one should be one hole at a time okay should have in uh fruits only so i'll make sure I'll not have two at a time okay uh that's great yeah. i've noticed something else uh this is really a question which uh i just want to take to the, your neighbors to your uh, this region but there guys uh just to uh, like uh mr Dave, uh, dennis to tell us which region is this mm -hmm. because i'm sure in the next uh two months mm -hmm. he'll be having a lot of suckers he'll be loving having like a, a thousand suckers at that, at the time mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, it will get to a point whereby it will not have anywhere mm -hmm. to take those suckers. Yes. Are you willing to sell those suckers to your sure. neighbors yes. or something? Anybody who is willing to come by from me, I'm, able to, I'm willing to uh, help, help a neighbor. Okay, uh, that's great. How much will you be selling uh, a suckers? Uh, right now, I've not talked about it, but uh, in the next video, I'll be telling you. I'm not... Uh, because it's just the infancy phase, uh, this is the infancy stage. Yep. So I'll have to look at the market and get back to you guys. Oh, that's great. Guys, let's walk to the dam. So guys, uh, as we walk towards uh, uh, the shallow dam, uh, this place uh this is us up here mm -hmm. hello <laughs> this hello. is us yeah. up here yeah. and uh, this is the top side mm -hmm. as you can see mm -hmm. so uh back is where the the river is as you can see it's down there mm -hmm. and these uh, farm has been designed in a terrace like uh layout mm -hmm. so uh we are at the top of the the, the first terrace so uh as we walk towards uh, the dam I can see Mr. Dennis uh, has done something uh, different on this side. I can see there are some, I uh, uh, normally call them uh, push the week, skuma wiki. And uh, they are normally, uh, please put your comment, the botanical name of the skuma wiki. And uh, some spinaches. And I'm sure uh, Mr. Dennis likes uh, organic stuff. Please, Mr. Dennis, tell us more about this, uh, these uh, skuma wikis. Yes, we have uh, two types of skuma wikis here. This is the kel, and the other one is called. Um, when I remember, I'll tell you the other one because this is a project for my wife. Mm -hmm. So she chose to uh, plant, uh, to have a kitchen garden. Okay. So we have uh, two types of skuma wikis. And uh, oh yes, the other one is called Mfalme. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the kel, mm -hmm. it grows to about uh, three foot high. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so this this line and this line. Guys, you have heard that? Three so foot tall. It's called Kel. Uh -huh. And uh, Falme is on the, on the on those terraces right there. Okay. And um, so we chose to have a garden here because of the proximity to the water body. Yep. And uh, because we'll be doing a drip irrigation in the near future. Okay. We chose to just have this uh, space secluded uh -huh. for the kitchen garden. I can see it's like uh, most of the uh, holes are filled up or you filled up the holes maybe to plant this? 
I didn't fill this hole, oh. but uh, there was a the truck that far the, the excavator mm -hmm. at first stays this lot. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, that's why we chose because there were spaces in the middle mm -hmm. to utilize them. Okay, to okay, something else. okay. So it was kind of a deliberate move, yep. but uh, we chose to uh, use the space because it was very deadly. Yeah. So, uh, guys, uh, tell you something uh, out of the topic a little bit. Uh, I've noticed that uh, the tissue catchers here are a little bit uh, not grown up or something. Uh, Mr. Dennis told us uh, sometimes uh, this place was flooding. Mm -hmm. But the advantages of doing uh, kind of this kind of farming in a yes. rocky area is uh, the drainage is very good. Yes. You never get uh, the holes filled up. Yes. So that means, however, heavy mm -hmm. or crazy the rain is mm -hmm. the hole the water will be drained down will yes. go downwards yes. maybe drain underground to the slopes back yes. to the river or something like that yes. that's the most advantage part of uh, uh this place yes and the holes here we have a rock underneath and the rock is uh porous is a porous rock so it drains water slowly and uh, it can preserve uh, um, water for a longer time as compared to a sandy place so there's an advantage of having a, of having a rock bed underneath because yeah. it's top soil in each top. Um, when I was back filling the holes, I had to put uh, six, six wheelbarrows of uh, red soil mm -hmm. and uh, four buckets of uh, manure. Okay. So, uh, because of the rock bed, uh, it can preserve the water for the. Uh -huh. uh, for the plant. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. And, and guys, uh, just to tell you, most of the professionals are going back to farming. Mm -hmm. I mean, farming is the next big thing. I'm into IT. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dennis here, uh, maybe he can tell you a little bit of his professional. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, before we talk about that, let me show you uh, the kind of other Skuma Wiki. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dennis, you said this is the Mfalme. Mfalme and the spinach. Okay. This is spinach and Mfalme. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of, uh, we call it um, capsicum. Okay. Kind of capsicum. Guys, you can see this is organic. Uh, this is manure, pure manure from the from the cow, yeah, no which has been used here, no fertilizer. And uh, we're going to make another video just for him to tell you guys on uh, what he uses to prevent uh, insects and uh, diseases mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. for the spinaches and the skuma wiki to push the wicks mm -hmm. uh, to be these uh, good looking yes. and uh, very fertile. Yes, so far I've not used anything. I think uh, if only God has blessed me, but I'll be preferring to use uh, the organic uh, organic. Uh, um, solutions like uh, using uh, chili and other things because we want to have everything organic in our kitchen in our plates uh, guys remember like we said earlier uh, uh, chili pepper is one of it uh, uh, you can use something like uh, something else uh, like uh, onion kitungo yes. saumo garlic all those you can make a concussion and spray your yes. crops just to free them from any pesticides. And I've done some research. Mm -hmm. I want to plant in between every every kale or spinach. I want to plant uh, uh, onions because mm -hmm. onions leaves have a, have a smell which mm -hmm. scares away insects. Mm -hmm. And I want to plant uh, dania, which is coriander. Mm -hmm. Coriander leaves have a smell which repels the insects. So I'm trying to, in the next few days, I'll be planting some, some of those in between so that I prevent uh, pests from coming. Guys, you heard about that? Yes. Each, each day is a learning day. Yes. You heard about that? So as you walk to the farm, uh, Dennis right here is not, uh, he has a very big passion about farming, but that is not his professional career. Maybe yes. he can tell you more about his, uh, his career line. Yes, uh, I used to be in the U.S. for over 10 years and I, east or west, uh, home is best. I decided to come back. I used to be in, uh, in the U.S. Navy 
and uh, now I'm back home and I am back to farming full swing. Yeah, uh, apart from that, yes. uh, Mr. Dennis here is a doctor. Yes, I used he to be in... a surgical tech. I used to, every day I was in the OR, so we used to do, we used to work with the US Marines and all that, so um, now I'm back here. Guys, you normally see in the movies yeah. uh, when guys go to the war zones yeah. that those guys in case uh, guys are blown up by the yeah. uh, bombs and all that. Yeah. Those medical guys, yes. yep, one that of them is yeah. Yes, I, I still want to go back in the near future. First, I'll do a little bit of farming, then I'll go back. It's always good to right. see guys uh, moving, coming back, yeah. remembering their home areas, and coming back to do yeah. big stuff, big things. So it's always good to see you guys back. Yeah. We also have plans and uh, maybe dreams of also yes. maybe getting there, hoping yes. that God is going to bless us one yes. day. Yes. So guys, you heard about that. Yeah. So not all farmers are careerless. Yeah. Most of the farmers have other stuff they are doing, they are working on. Yeah. So guys, uh, we have the shallow mm -hmm. dam right here. Yeah. It is a nice pan. It's a pan. So it's about 50 by 35. Um, I'm planning uh, that is in a uh, meters. The whole, the whole, um, this, the excavation, yeah, is about 35 for the, for the wind mm -hmm. and uh, 55 for the length, okay. And uh, deep the depth, I've calculated the depth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in the future, I want to um, finish it because there's a lot of soil which has to be taken out, okay. And uh, I was waiting for the rains, for the for the for the sand mm -hmm. to harden up, okay. so that uh, I can put the the, the dam liner. The dam liner. Okay. So in the next two three months, I want to have the dam, li dam liner ready, mm -hmm. and because of the water um, scarcity in this area, yeah. I want to pump some water here, and I think I love almost a, a half a million cubic meters of water. Uh -huh. So I can, that can run me for uh, a few months before the rains. So I love every plant here, uh, healthy, well fed, and well watered uh, 24 7 throughout the year. Awesome, Mr. Dennis. Yes. Uh, for those guys who don't understand, you talked about 55? 55 meters. Cubic? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a cubic, yeah. Uh, cubic. That is the, the uh, much water which can be stored in the. Oh. Like about in terms of how many liters? It's, a, it's about, I'll say this is almost half a million. Half a million. Guys, yeah. our normal tanks are always, uh, there is, we're used to the 10,000 liters. Yeah. Uh, so you said half a half million. A million. Yes. Yes. Guys, you can do half a million divided by 10. You know how many 10,000 liters yeah. tanks yes. will fill up this area. Uh, so uh, with that, guys, uh that brings us to the end of uh this interview and uh just to tell you guys uh farming is the next thing if you have a land which you're not utilizing somewhere please utilize it you can even plant trees you can play however crazy the uh the layout the terrain is you can see uh this is it's like a hill kind of thing which is rocky but uh, Mr. Ben is right here. Yes. Did utilize it very well. Yes. Did use excavations, excavators, yes. and all those scoop yes. holes, yes. like a thousand holes, banana holes into the area. Yes. I'm sure that is just a stage whereby you just need to utilize it in the meantime. Yes. I'm sure there's come something, something else which is uh, something else popping, yes. coming up. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's more to follow. Keep keep watching the channel, and you'll get more in the coming few days or a few months or a few years. Yeah, yes. so guys, uh, with that, uh, we're going to bring you more content. Please subscribe to Benster Farm. Let's grow together. And uh, please reach us a thousand subscribers. Uh, we also want to get uh, 4,000 watch hours. And uh, we haven't named this farm, but Mr. Dennis was thinking of uh, calling it a name. Maybe you can mention it, the name. Yeah, this is a young farm. And uh, we just starting, and I was, I was I've been thinking about it, and uh, this is because this used to be my, used to be my grandpa's farm, who was my friend, 
and uh, he, he was a really hard working guy and uh, due to that um, I want to eventually call it Muinde's legacy farm because of his legacy he brought this while he was in the military he was a very uh, future looking guy and uh, because of all that I want to honor him by calling it Muinde's legacy farm Guys, you have it about it. Muinde Legacy Farm. Mm -hmm. uh, Muinde, I'm going to put. Uh, mm -hmm. Please, if you want uh, some uh, suckers in the next like uh, mm -hmm. two months of uh, William yes. or Grant Nine yes. tissue catcher, banana tissue catcher. I'm going to put. Uh, please, you can always uh, DM us, and we'll be able to direct you where to get the suckers. Mm -hmm. In like two months, there will be like a thousand suckers right here. And I'm sure he can give you a better price than uh, whatever you get from Karimoyo mm -hmm. or from the research centers and all that. So stay, stay tuned for more content. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Ideas.